How you doing? I'm good, and you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Very good. Um, yeah, I mean, to kick off, I, I kind of wanted to talk immediately about Mikel Arteta and kind of the, the progress made this season um, by him at Arsenal. What kind of the main changes have you seen uh, this season at Arsenal? And what do you think is the reason behind such an improvement in forms compared to, say, last year? Well, I think the mentality you bring into the dressing room. I think uh, the best example would be probably uh, uh, putting away, you know, his captain, Obama Young. But uh, since he took over the team, I think he had a very good start and um, he struggled, you know, a couple of weeks after that in terms of results. Um, some troubles with uh, some players. The relationship was not good enough. And uh, all of a sudden now, I think uh, the winning mentality is back into this, this room. Ambitions as well. This is something new for the last few years. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and I think... Uh, when you look at the team, he has a proper first eleven now. You know, when he first came, it's it's normal, and uh, that a new manager try to uh, to combine different options. You know, on the on the pitch, try to see different tactics as well, different position for pretty players. But uh, you know, weeks after weeks, they have been improved a lot, and the team has been improved a lot. In, and on top of it, individuals as well has been improved a lot. Um, I can't. I cannot name so many players that are not, not the same anymore from last year. So, you know, now he's got his first 11 now, which is very important. When you look at Liverpool, when you look at Manchester City, when you look at big guns, you know, you know exactly who will be the first 11 for important games. And now you have the same with Arsenal, which is for me very important for the players. And, uh, but it, for me, the individuals, as some individuals, has impressed me a lot. Uh, Saka, Smith Rowe, for their, their responsibilities, for, for their personality on the pitch and off the pitch as well, especially for, for Saka, you know, after what, he, what he's been through after the European tournament. But um, White is the same, Ramsdale, the Japanese, you know, right defender as well, even Tierney, you know, all of them, Parte as well, has improved a lot. So there's so many players that have that, um, that been improved and, and um, at the end, it's the team that improves so much. It's so interesting the main qualities is they're still very hard, you know, to, uh, to beat, actually. When yeah. you look at the game recently against Manchester City or even Liverpool, when I switched off the TV, I, I thought to myself, well, I don't get it. Arsenal lost twice games, you know, on 2 nil at home and they were the best team on the pitch. But I'm missing something that Manchester City or Liverpool have been clinical in front of the goal. On, in the top games, you know, against top, uh, against top teams, you know that you, you, you won't have many occasions to score. And this is exactly what happened with Liverpool and Manchester City. They punish you, you know, on the rare occasions, you know. Uh, with Arsenal, when I look at the game last, last weekend against Liverpool, uh, I thought to myself, well, Odegaard had such a great occasion to score. Before, after that, three minutes after that, they score the first goal. And I'm thinking, well, this is the difference actually because they have been improved so much for the last few months. Victory is back, you know, our back. Confidence is back as well into the team. So many individuals are enjoying you know, the way they're playing on the pitch. They're still missing the last step, you know, being clinical, you know. Getting a proper, you know, striker who can score goals weeks after uh, weeks after weeks. Don't don't misunderstanding me. Uh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Lacazette. I think he's doing a great job with Arsenal, with Martinelli, with Saka, Smith Rowe, the guard. But when you look at the top score uh, table, you know, you have three Liverpool players in the ten, ten, top ten. You have uh, two uh, Tottenham uh, players in the top ten. And when you look at Manchester City, there are four or five players who can score between 10 and 15 goals. Actually, an Arsenal is getting better and better with uh, Smith Rowe, with uh, Martinelli, with Odegaard, with Saka. They score goals, they make assists, but they, they need to, to score more goals, more goals, and they need to get the proper strikers to be clinical in front of the goals. 
it's interesting that you you started the answer talking about Abamyang and that the importance of moving him on and then finished it with with Lacazette. The difference in kind of style of those two players as well is so stark. But it's interesting that Abamyang say moved to Barcelona and is, is suddenly finding his feet and finding his goal scoring form again. And Lacazette, whilst is is chipping in with plenty of assists, I think it's something like seven in his last twelve yes. games now. When you look towards the summer and what Arteta would need to do, fingers crossed, with Champions League football as well, do you think that there is an element of combining the strengths of what Lacazette has got with finding someone that can also find that finishing touch? Uh, yeah, I, I do believe that, yeah. I think Arsenal should propose a, a new contract to uh, Lacazette uh, because I think uh, he's a very good teammate uh, with um, the proper qualities, you know, uh, up front. But he's not... A great finishers, you know. I think it's a very helpful, you know, for his teammates, you know, uh, in terms of fluidity, you know, in terms of relationship you know, up front. But um, if they can, that there is no option. He's the only striker actually for Arsenal. Uh, like I said, mm. Obama Young has left the club, so for the next season, definitely they need to get a new strikers, different one, someone you can bring something different into the team. But on top of it, someone you can score goals, not every weekend, but most of them. I think physicality as well. You look at kind of the physicality of the forward line and maybe that's a, a bit lacking. You compare that yes. to say, the Arsenal side that you played in and the generation that followed the, the team that you played in. And you look at that team and in the midfield, Thomas Partey, as you've already mentioned, uh, yeah. kind of encapsulates that physical necessity that Arteta needs to bring. Do you think he's probably the best central midfielder since the, the teams that you played in and the invincible generation that followed you as well? Uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say, but um, they were missing um, great qualities um, in the middle of the park, you know, especially the holding midfielders, even the box-to-box -box midfielder. And in terms of aggressivity, personality, you know, in terms of challenging, you know, every, every single weekend. And the party, you know, after he came back from the African Cup, he was straight sent off, you know, if I remember where well, it yeah. was against Manchester City. And I thought to myself, well, how long is it going to take for him to come back and to be a competitive player on the pitch? And he did it straight. When he came back into the team, he was straight and he was focused. And uh, I think it took for him, you know, a couple of months to adapt himself into a new club, new culture and new football new teammates. So now it's, it's becoming the same player I used to see when he was playing for Atletico. And he's a strong, he's a rock, you know, and uh, his show personality, he's, he's calm, you know, with the ball. It, he's not, he doesn't show any panics, you know, when, he, when he's on the when he's on the pitch. And on top of it, even, even Saka, the Swiss guy, mm. He's, become, he's now he's back on his best level as well. This is not a surprise. So I think they, um, they find the right tactic, you know, for the team. And most of the players are getting back at the best level. And uh, for me, Partey is one of them. Um, when you look at the spine of the team, when you look at Ramsdale, you look at White, Partey, uh, uh, Odegaard or smith Row, and up front like Gazette, they are all doing well, mm. all of them. And you find the most experienced players as well in, in that spine with Xhaka and Partey and Lacazette at the, at the head of it as well. And I mean, yes. there's experience in regards to Erdegaard as well, who's played at such a senior level for so long, despite still being just 23. Ramsdale, of course, has experienced relegation a number of times, and that adds to your experience and, you yes. know, and where you need to learn from that. But, you know, in the summer, uh, there's going to be players that still come in of a very young age. And one of the players that is coming in is, is William Saliba. And he has got his recent and first call up to the French senior mm. national side, yes. which is massive. But but there's still a lot of questions kind of around his future at Arsenal. Do, at Marseille, he's been one of the best players, probably the best centre-half yeah. in Ligue 1 this year. Yes. I mean, the way in which he carries the ball forwards, he progresses the player who's passing is excellent. Do you think that Arteta probably needs to keep a clean slate with him for the summer, appreciate what he's done this year and integrate him into the team ultimately? To be honest with you, um, when, when Saliba left the club and when he went to Marseille, I agree with you. It's been a hint, you know, just like Kenduzi. Mm. Kenduzi has been a major hit, you know, uh, since he arrived to Marseille. And, um, but this question, you should ask the question to, uh, to this guy, you know. Yeah. Do you think you, you'll be able to come back to Arsenal? 
I remember what he said after he left Arsenal in the, in the newspapers. It was so frustrating. He said that uh, they, they never give me the chance to show my qualities on the pitch, which means now after his very good season with Marseille, now he's been called into the national team. Do you think Saliba will be able to come back to Arsenal? If at the end of the season, for example, Marseille will play for in the Champions League next season, do you think uh, that will convince him to come back to Arsenal? I think there's the issues with the transfer ban that still needs to be sorted out with Marseille as well. That could prove to be a factor. Saliba, the, the problem with Saliba, isn't it, is the comfortability he's had at, at, at Marseille this year that he's never had at Arsenal because that's that sense that he's never felt comfortable or necessarily wanted at yes. Arsenal. And, and Arsenal need to prove that to him in the summer. Yes. That, that he is wanted and that there is a pathway. Because you've got White and Gabriel, of course, who are so, oh, of course. so good and so comfortable and so set. And Arteta's now got to convince him that there is this route. But what I would argue, Emmanuel, is that you look at this season, a loan for Saliba was the perfect move, really, because he's got a season now where he's played a full year. At yes. Nice, he only had six months. Uh, Saint-Etienne, before that, he had a, a curtailed season because the pandemic yeah. started. And he's been given this first full season in senior football to really nail down and convince Arteta that this is the perfect opportunity. For yeah, him. but to convince Arteta, he needs to play regular, regular games, you know? He does. Hopefully, with does he have the insurance? Level. Does he have the guarantee that if he comes back to Arsenal, he will play every single game? I'm not sure about that. No. He's, well, got, he, he, he's, uh, he's in the first 11 team with Marseille. He's playing every single game. He's probably the most... Um, yeah, yeah, it's probably the player who played the most. Yeah. Yes. So, as I said, if you ask him to come back to Arsenal, that he will need guarantee. After what I did for Marseille, now I, I, I am in the national team because of my, my, my display with Marseille every single weekend. So, when you ask me to come back, okay, I need guarantee. I, need, I must play. I need to, to keep on improving myself. I need to, to go step by step. If you, if you tell them, I want you to come back because what you've done for Marcel, this is not enough for me. If I am a Saliba, this is not enough for me because this is my career as well. I'm very happy to be a Arsenal players, but I want you to show me confidence. And, I sh and on top of it, more important, I want you to play me. I don't want, I don't want to be on the bench because when I look at what was White and Gabriel, they are very good together. So it would be very difficult to be in the middle of them. It, even knowing that uh, Marseille is playing with different systems, you know, tactically, he can play with string defense or four or five mm -hmm. defense, he adapts himself so much. But now Arsenal with Arteta, their system is the same game after game. So there is so many questions. If I am Saliba, I'm asking so many questions. Maybe I will, I will would love to come back to, to England and to play for Arsenal, but there is no guarantee about that. Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you, as you say, it's got to convince him of the pathway that's, that's there. And maybe European football being available and, and those opportunities to rotate and to change will, will enable that. Just to, to, to lastly, just to switch uh, focuses um, to, to Chelsea. How do you see Chelsea kind of coming through this period of in, un, uncertainty? And what have you wow. made of the way that Thomas Tuchel has handled this situation as well? It's hard for me to answer this question because for me, there is nothing link with uh, sport you know it's only mm. politics so i'm not a politic guy you know yeah of course uh, you ask me a question i have no idea what will be uh, the chelsea future the next few weeks for, for but, the manager uh, i should say from the managerial to, to speak football and how Tuchel has kind of handled himself in this moment and he's just focused on the football and he's, he's deflected the questions yeah, away and to be honest with you if i am to hell on the players I won't say that uh, there is a good thing in, in, into this nightmare for the club. If victory uh, is not there anymore, the, the weeks after weeks, people will say in the newspaper, that's because of what uh, the club uh, has been living the last few weeks. The, uh, there is so many questions about the future of Chelsea. You don't know. You don't, you don't know what will happen to Chelsea at the end of the season. Mm. So that will give, give them... Um, an excuse, you know, if they don't have uh, good results. So you can play with free minds. And this is only for the players and the manager. And uh, my first thought is not for them. With all the respect I have for the manager and the players, yeah. my thought is for the people that are walking into the club. 
mm. my thought is for the fans that spending the money, you know, uh, for the clubs. But uh, the people that walk into the club, they are not uh, questioning themselves the same question that the players every morning when they wake up. Yeah. Because the future is tomorrow for them. Because they need to pay a bill. They don't have the same salary, the same wages. If I am the player or the manager, I've got money in my bank. If tomorrow uh, Chelsea is down, well, I change the club. I go to some, some, somewhere else. But it's not the same for, for the people that are working in the backstage. So, yeah, I can understand um, the situation is very difficult to handle for, for the manager or the team. But in the, mean, in the meantime, that gives you, you know, sometimes excuses. You know, you, you play as free minds because you said, you think to yourself, whatever happened on the pitch, you know, it can be related, you know, and linked with what happened outside the pitch. But if I am someone's walking into the club, well, this is completely different. Maybe I will have a sleepless night because yeah. of uh, what happened uh, around the club. Emmanuel, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. your answers and uh, it's been a pleasure to speak with you. Oh,